I think uh, I turned off my Wi-Fi. I was on oh. LTE. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. now everything's good. <laughs> okay, awesome. Perfect. Yay. Um, so, are you guys super excited to glaze your pieces today? Yeah. Are, yeah I'm really, really excited. This is the fun part. I mean, making ceramics is really fun, but being able to paint it is really exciting when you pull it out of the kiln and get to see what it looks like. Okay, so... Um, so we're glazing and glazes, ceramic glazes are, are kind of special. They're just for ceramics and they, they'll make your, um, surface glassy and, and make it water resistant or you can put water in this cup and it'll be fine. Um, so it's a special kind of glaze and you have to heat it really, really hot in the kiln where this like this bowl would be like glowing hot red it gets really hot um and then uh, the pieces that we're going to be glazing today we're going to be firing in a special way on thursday and i'm going to tell you guys more about that later but thursday is going to be an exciting day so um, I was thinking the best pieces to glaze today are probably <laughs> the pinch pots. So if you could get your pinch pots out, because for the um, for the type of firing we're doing on Thursday, it has to be something that is really sturdy and I'm isn't going to break easily. Do you have your pinch pot? You don't have your pinch pot, Madeline? Mm -mm, it didn't come in. It isn't in there? Okay. I'll put that on there. No, we don't have our pinch pots either. You don't have your pinch pots either? Okay. Um, so if you don't have your pinch pot, I would go with um, like maybe a slab thing that you made with the slabs. Did you make a shape, Madeline? Like, um, Madeline, do you have your little house that you made? Uh, no. Snowman? No. You she don't have a little house? Her heart. And also my spider, but it broke. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm writing all these things down, Madeline, so we can get these to you tomorrow, by tomorrow. I don't know how to do that out loud, too. So, um... The reason I want you to pick something that's not going to break is because um, the type of firing we're doing, sometimes this pottery can easily break because of the process. And I don't want you guys to have anything that breaks. So look at your pieces and whatever, um, whatever you think is well made, that's not going to break. Oh, you have your little. Oh, you have your heart and your snowman. Perfect, Madeline. Joaquin, you have your pot. I have my. I didn't know. So I would choose something maybe different from your cheese board, Julia. What? Do you hear me, Julia? I would choose something different just because that cat could might be a little fragile. That's a really okay. cute cap. And I don't want it to break off. So, what are we doing? Next? So, you're just going to, for now, pick a, your pinch pot or something, something sturdy that doesn't have attachments to it. Um, something that maybe just small one. Okay. Um, and then you're going to need your glazes. These are going to be regular glazes, so you'll see different jars. These are the ones that do not have stars on them. So you should have four that don't have stars on them. Okay. 
So you should have a blue, um, a yellow, a red, and a white. Perfect. Okay. And we're also going to need some water, a cup of water. Without paint, our kits didn't come with paintbrushes. Okay, um, do you have paintbrushes from our pre one of our previous classes? You they didn't, didn't do watercolor. Okay, yes, you will need paintbrushes. Um, so you don't need those for right now. Um, and Spellman's, any paint brushes will do. Yeah, any paint brushes. Mine are just like my kids, my kids' craft brushes. So these are great. This um, one has a star on yeah, so um, you don't need the little squeeze bottles for today. So you just need the four little jars um, that don't have stars on them. So there should be four colors. And then water and brushes. You can use a big brush to cover your piece and maybe some a smaller brush for details. And then um, you might want to cover your table with some newspaper or something. Not the not the white paper that you got. Did they get um, news newspaper, Kristen? Uh, we had paper. No, I didn't end up giving them newspaper. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So. Um, you can cover your table if you want, but it's going to be fine. The glazes don't stain, so if you get them on your clothes, they'll wash out. So they're really, um, really easy to clean up if you make a mess. Okay, and then the other thing you might want is a pencil. So a regular graphite pencil, any any pencil like this is perfect. And you might want to put it. I just have like a little paper plate. Yeah, she said paper plate. This is if you want to mix your colors, you can mix them on, on this plate. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the glazes we're going to use today. These are um, stroke and coat glazes. They're really great because the color you see is pretty much the color you're going to get in the end. And the thing I also like about these is that one coat is more transparent and two or three coats is more opaque. And transparent means you can kind of see through it and opaque means you can't see through it, okay? So you can kind of layer them if you would like to see through it, kind of like watercolors. Um, and they're also lead-free and non-toxic, so you can use this on something you want to put food on, okay? So you can just keep that in mind. Um, so, I'm gonna show you some examples of works before we get started. So the world of glazes is really big. There are lots and lots of ways to explore with glazes. We, we are kind of spoiled. 
years ago, they used to have to make their own glazes and figure it out. So the glazes are, are made with minerals like silica and things like that. And they had to put a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and mix it together and try and figure out colors. But now it's all done for us. We can just buy it in a bottle. And there's lots of options. And then there's just lots of op options on how to paint. Like this person painted some flowers. Mm. And then this person just painted shapes. And I also included some of these other examples. You could paint a solid background color and then just put um, other like sprinkles of colors on top. And that's really fun. This person used a sponge to sponge her her glaze on. So if you have your little ceramic sponge, you can use that. And then because of the glazes we're using, you can kind of see that these glazes are a little transparent where they overlap. So you could even layer colors like a rainbow and have them overlap a little. And then I love this artist. She's one of my favorites. Um, you could really just make some really beautiful flowers all over your piece or whatever you're interested in. Okay, so everyone got everything ready? Is everyone ready to go? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Ready to go? Awesome. Yeah. Good, great. Okay, so. start, I have my piece that I'm going to be glazing, and you might want to just rub it a little, because sometimes there can be dust and stuff on it, if you blow inside of it, you just get any dust particles off of your piece. Okay. And you guys have your glaze and little um, pod, like pots. And you can work with one at a time so that you don't spill them. Um, Just or if you would like to mix colors, you can put some of it on a plate. Just a little, just a little bit. Um, you can always add more. So I always like to start with just a little because we can always put more in there. Okay. Um, so to start, you might want to start by drawing a design on your piece, whatever you want to paint. And your pencil is going to, the pencil lines are not going to show in the end. They're going to burn off in the kiln. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm just going to draw some triangle shapes on my piece. And you can erase if you would like. So I, I just drew some triangle shapes around my pot. You can draw whatever you are interested in. Just have fun and be creative. Maybe you can draw some dinosaurs 
or even just circles. You can draw dragonflies. Yeah. yeah, wait, wait to paint, guys, um, and I'll show you how to paint them on. They're a little bit different um, than painting with regular paints. Are these it's sort of like watercolors or paint? They kind of act a little bit like watercolors because one, if you just put one layer of glaze on, then it's transparent, like a watercolor. You can see what's underneath. Um, but if you put two, then it starts to build up and become where you can't see through it. So you can, um, you can layer them if you'd like. Okay, does everyone kind of have a design drawn or do you need some more time? Yeah, I have a design. You have a design? Okay. So once you have your design, you can use the color as it is. So you have yellow, blue, and red, and white, and you can use it just the way it is. Or you know that you can mix blue and yellow to make green, and you can mix red and yellow to make orange. and blue and red to make purple. So then you have a few extra color options. And remember, just a little bit goes a long way. and You can always add more later on. You add a little paint to your plate. Make some purple yeah. over here. Yeah, I was trying to pour it, but it keep going so slow. Okay. You guys see how my red and blue made purple now? I'm just gonna get all the extra paint out of my brush and then I'm gonna rinse it out. So when we fired our pieces in the kiln, they they did what is called vitrification. So it became hard. It got most of the water out of the piece and then hardened. But our pieces are very still, still very much porous. That means that they will soak up water. So we have to be careful how much glaze we add to it because glaze is water. And if too much water gets on our piece, it could make it explode in the kiln. So I'll show you in just a second how we're going to want to apply these. Okay, so I made a few different colors on my, my plate. Okay, and I'm going to use a smaller paintbrush because the areas I want to paint are smaller. You can use a bigger paintbrush if you're just painting a big area. 
and I like to get my paintbrush a little wet. And then I'm going to get some glaze on my paintbrush. And you can start painting in the areas that you want. And you're going to notice that the clay is going to soak it in very fast. And that's because it is still very porous. It's soaking up all that water from the glaze. So we're going to make sure and just do one layer, one even layer. Okay, so if you paint in the area that you want, you can see how it's drying really fast. If you want to paint over this, you'll have to wait for it to completely dry and then paint over it. And usually by the time you paint the whole cup, it's dried already. And then you can paint over it. So you, just like our watercolors, you can mix colors beforehand or you can layer the colors on your piece. And if you want to do a second coat, if you went vertical on your first strokes, it's good to go the opposite way. That way you don't see your brush strokes in your final piece. What do yellow and blue make together? What will what colors? Yellow and blue. That will make green. So like if I go up and down with my first coat of paint and I want to put a second coat of paint on it, I'm going to want to go side to side. The second time. You just start filling in all these areas you want with the color that you want. And I like to rinse out my brush every time I change a color. and kind of dry my brush a little. How's it coming along? Good. 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 Good.
it's a little different on this ceramic just because it dries up so fast you have to keep going back for more paint Tom it maybe doesn't carry as far as other paints do So you can dip right into your little box or you can mix it. On your plate. So one thing I wanted to point out is you, you can see that right now I'm not painting on the bottom. Um, so you don't have to paint on the bottom, but you definitely can because we have things that we can put them on. Because we put these in a kiln and this paint becomes glass. And if there's some on the bottom and we put it on our shelf, it will glue to our shelf and it will forever be in there. <laughs> we have like these little, little metal um, pokey things that hold it up. So it'll stick to the little metal pokey things and then we can just pull it off. Doing the back so, and the front. Yeah, so you can paint wherever you'd like if, if you want. You don't have to worry about leaving this without paint. Is glaze made out of sand? Um, it is. Like, there's definitely um, clay properties in glaze. So it's made out of the same materials as your clay. Okay. But then it has, then it has a certain material that makes it turn into glass. Oh. So glaze has um, silica, alumina, and flux, which are all the same things that make up clay. And then there's other substances added to give it color, which are called oxides. Uh, the silica it is what melts to make it into glass. And the flux allows the silica to melt at different temperatures. So if you add more flux into it, it will melt at a lower temperature and less flux will melt at a higher temperature. And then the alumina keeps, he keeps it from like just dripping off of your piece. It, it like holds it onto your piece. So it's kind of like chemistry. When you develop a glaze, you kind of have to figure out all these chemical reactions. So it's kind of fun. And people develop their own special glazes all the time. They're like, you know what, I want my glaze to do this. And then they, they figure out the formula. 
And if you guys are ever feeling brave enough, you can get all of the ingredients for making your own glaze at Trinity Ceramic. And yep. there's a guy there um, who will do all of it. Of course, I can't think of his name right now because I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. You know. He's, he's always there. He's the head yeah. guy. With the handlebar mustache. Why can't yes. I this guy's name? Like, it was just a I mistake. don't know. Like, John. It starts with a C. I'm going to think of it. Connor. I don't remember his name. What his is Connor. it? Connor. He's Connor. Connor, okay. And he keeps his vape with him all the time. Yeah, he is the one who, um, he developed some of their plays and things yeah. like that. So he's, uh, he's very familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not brave enough to try all the things. <laughs> like, try to do a recipe for glazing enough stuff blow up in the kiln that I don't want to <laughs> try my hand at it. Yeah, you definitely have to be brave and understand how it works. So I've, I've never tried either, but that would be fun to do that. How's everyone doing? Good. 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 What are you guys painting? Um, I do have an assignment for you guys. If you're done with your glazing early enough, you can definitely start on this. Um, but for tomorrow's class, we need some pieces that have not been fired in the kiln yet. So if you guys have your clay, um, if you could make like some more pinch pots, or some little slab pieces um, for tomorrow, it would be great. Because we're gonna be using them. Can I glaze a bowl? Or do you think I should focus on the little things for now? Um, if you're done with your piece, you could um, use this time to make your pieces for tomorrow. So you can start wedging out some new clay um, and making a new bowl for tomorrow or whatever you want for tomorrow. Is that okay, Sam? Do you have your clay still? Do you have some? But I, but I want to let it be because we're going to be learning some more, um, some more glazing techniques through the throughout the week. So you can you can go ahead and start glazing another piece, or you can save them for the, our other techniques too. Okay, mom. How many colors do I need to make to get more? So, um, for our pieces for tomorrow, they need to still be really wet. Um, so when you make it and you're done with it, be sure to wrap it with some, a, a plastic bag or something to keep all the moisture in. Tuck it in real good. Okay. Because I don't, we don't want them to, to dry out by tomorrow. We want them to be pretty wet still for the things we're doing tomorrow. Okay. 
Um, tomorrow, can we make? Can we make? The, That's good, um, Julia. The pot where you put on the bottom. Um, yeah, you can make that today. Or um, so the reason why we're not making them tomorrow during our class is because I want them to dry just a little bit. So there's different stages of drying. Um, when you make a piece, it's really wet. And I want it to the next stage over, which is like leather hard. It's still, it's still got um, a lot of water in it. It's still pretty wet, but it's not as loosey-goosey. Like it feels like leather. It's a little more stiff and holds it shape, shape better. So you could even make it like an hour before class and leave it sitting. Okay. So when it when it dries completely and it's ready to be fired, that's called bone dry. That's like no more water in it. I don't want it bone dry, but I also don't want it uh, really wet, yeah. So we kind of want it in between. Wet to dry. Yeah. How you doing, Madeline? Oh, I love him. He's so cute. That's going to be so fun every Christmas to put him out. Oh, beautiful. And do you still have Clay, Madeline? Uh, yep. Okay, perfect. So um, a pinch pot would be perfect, or even just uh, rolling out some clay so it's okay, flat. Fine. That would be perfect, too. Look at what my, I made. Oh, I love it. Good job. So cute. That's a great job. Can, can we do something else? Can we do another? So, can we play something else too? You could. You could paint something else. You do have some little red hearts in your boxes and you could paint one of those. Yeah, and I want to tell you all about the little red hearts, the hearts that you have. So we, like, in a normal year, every year for um, Dallas Arts Month, which is in April, we make these hearts, um, and we have our little logo stamp on the back, and we glaze them, and we put a little note on the heart that says, this is for you um take like take me home this is a little art for you and then we hang them in trees and on people's mailboxes and and doors we do that all over the neighborhood but this year we didn't get to do it so um what i'm gonna have all of you do is you have these little hearts get to glaze them um, when I get back to you i'm also going to give you uh strings and I'm going to give you the little notes to put on the hearts if you want to place them around your neighborhood for or give them as gifts to people. Okay, like entirely up to you. We have hundreds, hundreds of these things. So um, uh, it would be fun to place them all over, but that's just if you guys want to. Yeah, so I think a heart would be perfect to paint if you want to paint something else. Yeah. Um, and then, Spellman's, are there any ceramics in your box that the three of you don't recognize? I think that you guys cut out just as you were about to tell me something about that. Uh, yeah. I think there was one bowl that we weren't sure if it was a bowl. You said you were making a bowl. Do you know if this is yours, Madeline? Yeah. Yeah, Madeline, is that yours? Yep. Okay, that's Madeline's. And we're missing 
that's not Alyn. Malin's missing a mug. The Cannon Boys are missing pinch pot. And, um, and Cannon Boys are missing their hands. And they're missing, uh, missing pinch pots? Okay. And also, so we're missing four pinch pots, a mug, and Madeline's bowl. But we know where Madeline's bowl is now. Me, to see. Also, me and Sam are both missing our hands. Okay. There are some hands still being fired. Yes. Okay. So Spellman's. Okay. And Julia. And boys, did all three of you make a hand? Yeah. Why not Arch? Arch, I so Cannon. I think. Yeah. I have to just get a piece of toy. Hands in a loop. Say that again. Say that again, Sawyer. Uh, with me, I was just saying, I think we had two hands and a leaf. And a leaf. Oh, yeah, the leaf. Okay, we know where the leaf is. Two hands and a leaf. And a leaf. <laughs> um, Cannon boys, did you need your pinch pots as well? Yeah. We'll make some too today after this class. Okay, cool. Um. How many pinch pots? I, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> but I wouldn't worry about the pinch pots. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me. What are you supposed to do with the clay to make a pinch pot? Yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. You can make whatever you want, Madeline. So all of your glazed pieces that you glazed today and all of the pieces that don't belong to you, set them out on your porch. Everybody got it? Okay. Okay. And then um, I will fire the stuff that you guys glazed today. Jess, was this underglaze or was this stroke and coat? This is stroke and coat. Okay. Um, so they are going to be going in on Thursday, firing Thursday. Okay, so I'll save those for the Thursday firing. And then um, rearrange everybody's misplaced ceramics. And there are some things that didn't survive, but I don't know exactly what they are. But I'm going to try to get all of that sorted, okay, everybody? Okay. Um. And your parents can just text me if you think of something else that you're missing. But yeah, just set everything on your porch, all the things that you glazed today, and everything that doesn't belong to you, then I'll be the one to do the switcheroo. Okay. So, it's right. If you guys could um, paint two things today i think that would be really great um, for our project on thursday if we could have at least two things painted what was that joaquin did you say something do we have to put these on the porch as well the ones she glazed yeah on? the things that yeah. she glazed put on the porch and then um if, if there's anything in her box, like the leaf that doesn't belong to her, or anything else that doesn't belong to her, so that I can get it to everybody. Hopefully, I'll get it right by, by this afternoon. And remember, um, if you guys just do one layer, it will look more transparent. So if you go over it again, it'll be more opaque where you can't see your, your clay. So it's up to you what you look like. Okay. 
What day are you coming to pick up the cer the ceramics that aren't ours? Today, Joaquin. So everything needs to be set on your porch. Like I've got some work to do here, but I would have everything set on your porch by this afternoon. I'll probably be coming by around like three or four ish. Okay. Ish, right? Because it's quarantine. Yes. I have a hard time knowing what time it is. But it will be in the afternoon. It'll be later on this afternoon, okay? Okay. So you guys still have some time if you want, if you need more time to glaze a couple pieces. And then um, you can either make your piece um, for tomorrow. I, I would make maybe two things if you could. Um, either today and then wrap it really well with some um, a plastic bag or make it about an hour before class like at 9 30 tomorrow and just leave it out don't wrap it just leave it sitting So any areas you don't paint will um, just be your, your raw clay. It won't get a glass covering. But we can put a clear coat over it. So um, if you want it to still be sealed, but you just want to see your white clay underneath, you can just um, paint nothing. And then we can put a clear coat on top. Miss Kristen, a funny thing is you'll, since you're our neighbor, you'll probably be getting some of the hearts from us. <laughs> Well, that's true. I have so many of those at home, Julia, because my kids will like go through them and pick the ones that they like and then take them home. That's funny. If you guys make really cool ones, yeah, I might snatch it up before our neighbors do. <laughs> You are, you're welcome to keep one, too, for your family. How'd your guys' piece, pieces turn out? You're still working on them? This one's mine. Wow, that's so pretty. Wow! And look at Julia's. I made a mug. Wow, that looks awesome, Julia. I seriously can't wait to see everyone's pieces fired. It's so fun. It's like Christmas morning. It is. Every time you open the kiln after a glaze firing, it's so exciting. It is. I still get like giddy before I can open the kiln. I'm <laughs> excited to be like, what is, how did it turn out? Because even if you're a pretty experienced ceramic artist, you still don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. Yep. That's the magic of ceramics.
And Thursday, we're going to be doing a special firing. Since you guys aren't going to be there to open the regular kiln, um, so we have something planned for you. It's a big surprise, so don't yeah. miss Thursday. Don't miss Thursday. It's going to be so cool. Um, okay, so just recap. You should have two pieces glazed. You can have a little heart and one of your, one of your own pieces glazed from today um, for that firing on Thursday. So you'll, you'll set those out on the porch along with any things that aren't yours. And then for tomorrow, I need you guys to make a couple pieces that are going to be wet. So you can make them today and cover them, or you can um, make them tomorrow morning about an hour before class. And I would um, not do any decorations or anything on it because we're going to do that tomorrow. Um, so what would be perfect is something flat like a slab or like a pinch pot, just a simple pinch pot. No, like, like you could put a handle and stuff on it, but um, don't use your tool to make any marks in it or anything. Because tomorrow we're going to be learning a technique where we do make marks and glaze it, um, glaze it at the same time. Okay, everyone got that? Yep. Yeah. Clear. You guys just let us know if you have any questions in the meantime, okay? Ceramic glazing, the, the week that we do is a really active week. It's really fun, but you may have a lot of questions that pop up and all you have to do is like text me or call me and I'll help you guys answer any questions, okay? Okay. And Madeline or anyone else, if you forget how to make a pinch pot or any of the other things that we made, you can go back to those videos on YouTube. And um, make sure to wedge your clay before you make it. Okay, we okay. good? So wedge it and cover it and you'll be good. Okay. Awesome. I'm excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be so fun. <laughs> Glazing is my favorite. If yes, I can only figure so out how to get everybody's ceramics to them correctly. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Sorry about all that, guys. <laughs> okay. um, but thanks for bearing with, bearing with old Miss Kristen and her crazy brain. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Yep, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye. 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 bye.